So visit our sponsors, sign up for everything, and enjoy our talk from Nevena. Thank you. I'm just going to record this. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Got it. Right. Sorry about that, guys. I just promised I would screen record everything um, for the audio, guys. Is that okay? Okay, wicked. All right, so thank you very much for having me. And I would like to start my talk by telling you a little story. So when I was a little girl, my dad used to tell me bedtime stories every single night. I would get really excited. I would run and put on my polka dot pajamas. I would grab my cat, who I named Hermione, after my favorite Harry Potter character, and I would quickly go to bed and I would snuggle under all my sheets and I would wait for the phone to ring. And it would ring every single night, without a doubt. My dad would ring up and he'd be on the other end waiting to tell me a story. Now, the best part of these stories is that I could actually co-create them. I could be a part of them. So my dad would say to me, pick any, anything you want, any object, and let's, let's do a story. So I would pick things like a toothbrush, a sink, and some soap, and my dad would create this huge story how the toothbrush was jealous of the soap because it was closer to the sink, and I got to know these characters. But what's really important is that I actually learned how to understand and how to empathize with toothbrushes, which obviously later on helped me understand people. And that's actually one of the most important skills that I use in my job today. I mean, I ended up studying a bunch of languages, but the thing that I learned when I was five years old is something that really helps me every single day to be better at my job and to understand people and connect with them. So I want to share that with you. And I'm going to show you how you can actually get more clients, so increase your client acquisition and client retention by just adding a tiny bit of empathy in your marketing. Right, so before we do all of that, I want to talk about what is empathy. So there are a lot of definitions, but I've broken it down into three things that I think are understandable and digestible. So it's a sense of self-awareness, being able to distinguish your own feelings. And a lot of us are not so comfortable with that. So it's really important that you get to tell yourself and understand what you are feeling. It's taking another person's perspective. So being able to sort of put yourself in someone else's shoes and look at the world from their point of view. And thirdly, it's being able to regulate one's own emotional response. So I'm going to play a little game with you, and I hope you guys, I know you've just eaten, but I hope that you're going to be willing to participate. So I want to show you how you could actually learn how to empathize, because it's important to know that it's a skill that all of us have. So every single person in this room can do it. It's like yoga. You just have to practice it. So I'm going to ask you to practice it with me. One of the ways that you can do that is by imitating someone else's emotion. So, for five seconds, I am going to smile at you, and I'm going to ask you all to smile really wide, smiles back at me. Is that, can we do that? Yes? Okay, right. Are you guys ready? Is everyone ready? All right, ready? Smile. Can you see them? Amazing. Excellent. All right, so you did a really good job. How's everyone feeling? Do we feel a bit more positive? Yeah, yeah, a little bit? Okay. So this is, this is a proven theory. So it was actually, first of all, uh, suggested by an American literary critic, Edgar Poe, in 1845. And it was later on proven by two neuroscientists. One of them is French, and his name is John Dessity and Philip L. Jackson. And they basically say that by imitating someone else's emotions, we can boost our empathy skills, right? So we can connect to people. And this goes all the way back to the real explanation that empathy is something that we all need to survive. So we all have it. It's, it's hardwired in us, and we just have to practice it. Now, we, ha we as people are genuinely social animals. What does that mean? That means that everything that we do, all of our thoughts and desires, we produce in response to someone else's reactions, or we direct them towards someone else. So that ties in perfectly. But you can't go around smiling at people to get them to buy your product, right? I mean, that would be a little bit creepy if you sort of just smile at them and say, oh, buy this, or sign up to manage WP and smile, right? So how do you take empathy 
And how do you put that in marketing? How do you connect to people without you know, scaring them away? So we're going to look at two ways. One of them is how do you add it to your, com like to your copy, so make it high converting copy. And the other way is how you do it through storytelling. Okay. So let's have a look at high converting copy. Have a look at this part. Is it familiar? Sort of? Okay, so roses are red, violets are blue, donate to a teacher with the same name as you. This is a campaign that DonorsOrg, DonorsChoose.org did for their Valentine's Day campaign. And it was a really exciting and novel way to solicit more money to get teachers to have more money for their projects. And the way that it worked is that they were able to connect people with their names. I'm just going to show you what the response was. Jason French said, just received a donor's choose um, email to bring Mr. French's class. Well played, done and done. So people literally just saw their name and thought, I have to do something about this. I have to give them money. And because they're talking to me, they're not just talking to anyone out there, but they're actually, they're talking to me. They're, they're saying, hey, you, you, I need you to give me money because we have something. We, we share a name. And I know that it sounds a little bit, um, you know, funny and, or silly even to just think that by somebody calling you out on your name, you're more likely to, to give them money, but this, this proved a huge spike in their donations. In fact, it's interesting because 60% of sales are actually lost to inertia. So when you're out there thinking and writing your copy, you're not actually competing with other competitors. You're competing with the fact that people can't be bothered to do anything about it. So they will receive your emails, text messages, Twitters, and they won't take action because they will look at it and think, nah, it's not for me, or this is not relevant. And that's natural because we as humans, we need to feel relevant. We seek lots of signs of relevance. And this is because we want to connect to each other, which brings us back to empathy. So simple tricks like this, when you stop being vague in all of your marketing and you start getting specific, really can bring in new clients and can increase your brand awareness. I want to show you a few more examples just so we can get down concrete so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is an email subject line. Saying goodbye is never easy to do, so we thought it would give you a chance to rethink things. I mean, it's, it's a little bit long. Who here thinks that they would open this if they saw this? Put your hands up. Okay, not that many people. Okay, interesting. So I wouldn't either, but look at what they said, what they do here. They say, they talk to me by their name, by my name, sorry, so they say Nevena. So I'm thinking, okay, this is relevant to me. You haven't been opening our emails in the past few months. And the last thing we want to do is come across clingy. So, if you still want to stay connected, then just press, don't let me go, below. And we promise we won't let you. Otherwise, we'll take you off our list in free business days. No hard feelings. And the CTA, don't let me go. So, what's interesting here, that they are very specific, and they are very personable. So, they're saying, you know, we don't want to be clingy. That's something that we've all heard. Or our friends say, oh, my boyfriend is so clingy, or my friend is so clingy. It's very personable. It's something that we use every single day. And that's what's so interesting about it. They've taken something which we throw about in conversation from day to day, and they've put it in an email asking us not to unsubscribe. With a very powerful CTA, don't let me go. So they could have put anything, unsubscribe me, or keep me posted, or uh, yes, or no, but they really went out there and put that other touch of emotion to get our response. Now, I have another example that actually my colleague Heather showed me last night, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you because it's, it's excellent. Um, and it's from Native Deodorant. Um, it's an all natural deodorant, and when you order, they send you this. Heather, you rock. It was just another mundane day at the office when suddenly Jackie t 
took a look at the computer and her eyes widened. We did it, she exclaimed. We got an order from Hedda Dobson. Laura jumped out of her chair and ran to Jackie's desk. She didn't even read the entire email. She just saw Heather and started screaming in the light. Oh my God. Laura shouted, this is real. We have an order from Heather. The entire office erupted in applause. Party in the USA. Blurred from the, blurred from the speakers. Jackie's a huge Miley Cyrus fan as confetti rained down from the ceiling and champagne bottles were popped. The entire native team is thrilled you're a customer. Thank you so much for your support and for giving us a reason to cheer on another champion of health. As soon as we're done exchanging high fives, we'll send you tracking information so you can track your package. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us. Now, I need an honest hands up. Who has seen a better copy than this? Anyone? Yes? All right, so there's not a lot of people because I think this is one of the most fantastic copies when you order a product. Why? Because let's break it down. So Heather, it's very specific, right? It's her and she rocks, so we're praising her. We're telling her she's cool because she's ordered our product. But then it goes into this huge story about what happens, how they're so excited and there's confetti and they're popping champagne and they can't wait for her to use their product. So it's very personable. Now, Heather's in the audience. I'm gonna ask her, Heather, do you still use native deodorant? Yes, I do. Right, so what does this mean? This, <laughs> they rock. So this means that it works. It really does. It's taking that extra time and thinking in your head, okay, what is going to make my customer feel so special? Well, making them feel special is just showing them how excited we are that they're part of our team. And the best way to do that is by telling, telling a story. So getting specific, so just calling someone out by their name is so important. Getting emotional really brings in the results and being to the point. So a lot of people think that emotion and empathy means that you have to write essays about how the leaves are falling and the tear dropped down someone's, that, that's not it. I mean, that's just, that's a great novel. But this can be very emotional by just being personable. And you can do all of that in your copy and be to the point. It doesn't have to be a long copy. So I said at the beginning that I would show you another way that you can add empathy. So we've talked about how you can do it in your copy, how you can adjust the little things, but I'm gonna show you another, and I think a very powerful way that you can empathize with your customers. And that's by introducing storytelling. So I told you a little story at the beginning of the presentation about my dad reading me, telling me stories. Does anyone here remember what my cat's name was? What was it? Hermione, right. So you guys remembered my cat's name and I can promise you one thing. You will go home, six months will pass and you will remember what my cat was called. And you know, that's, so, that's why stories are so great because they are memorable. Because you will remember them. You no longer think of me like this. You think of me as a chubby little girl with her cat in bed waiting for the phone to ring. And because you can visualize what, what I used to do and how I felt. And there is a little bit of a science of storytelling because I, I want you to really believe it. So I want to get into it, why it's so important. Because when we hear stories, two things happen. Our brain releases two important hormones. One of them is cortisol. And what this does, it makes, it grabs our attention. So it alerts us. We suddenly start paying attention because it's a story. It's something that we want to, we're interested in. But the other one that I really want to focus on is oxytocin. So yes, there is such a thing as a hormone which actually increases your empathy. It makes you emotional. And I'm not sure if any of you have heard of Paul Zak. He is a neuroscientist and he did a fantastic talk about oxytocin. But he talks about different ways of releasing it and what the effect of it is on people. So he says that oxytocin is actually a trust molecule. What does this mean? So we get a surge of oxytocin and we feel more connected to people. We want to help them. We're more inclined to do good things. He in fact calls it the moral hormone, which is really interesting because 
when you listen to a story, you feel like you get to know the person and you then decide if you like them or you don't, right? So if you like someone, you're more likely to help them. And this is exactly why it's so important. Now, Paul Zak also talks about different ways of releasing oxytocin. He says um, he's got a great nickname. Um, it's Dr. Love. And he says that um, essentially you can hug people. And by hugging someone eight times a day, they become a happier person. So if you haven't hugged anyone today, please do. But again, it's, it's very odd because you can't, we already talked about, you can't just smile at people and then go try hug them and get them to buy a product. I mean, that would, that would be very scary if you just sort of went up to people trying to hug them. So you've got to find a different way of getting that oxytocin flowing in someone's body. And it's by storytelling. So I'm going to play you a little video, which will show you exactly what it's like to tell a great story, at least in my opinion. So just, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good example of a story. So if you don't identify with it, um, just listen to the storytelling. I suppose my story starts like anyone else's. My parents wanted what was best for me and not to have to experience the struggles that they did. So I pursued a business degree and then afterwards I planned to pursue law school. So what did you guys think? Did you think it was a good story? No? It was okay? It was okay? Did, you ident did anyone identify with it? Yeah? Does, what, does anyone know what she was selling? Do, do we know? Handbags. handbags. But was it, was it obvious? Was it clear straight away that she was selling handbags? <coughs> no. But did she ever say what the handbags were made out of or how much they cost? Okay. Any women in the room, would you buy that handbag? No? You would consider it? Okay. So this was a release video. So what does this mean? This was a video that uh, talks about the origin of the story. And they worked on the copy and it actually showed that after telling the actual story, it was the short, uh, conversion rate was increased by 36%, which is really interesting. Why? Because she focuses on the feeling of the bag, right? So she doesn't actually sell you the bag. She doesn't show it to you from all angles on very attractive models or how you can wear and what it goes with. But she tells you what, why it's important to her, right? It's important to her because she's following her dream. So she wants you to take the handbag. And every time you have it and you look at it, you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to follow my dreams. And I bought this handbag. So she's asking you to cancel out and take away all of the white noise and focus on what matters. And what's really effective about it here is that she sells the handbag through her own story. 
Now, it's important to remember it's not about the magnitude of the story. So yes, she has a, she has a tragic story, but it, you don't need that in order to, for a story to be effective. You need to be able to tell it, to have the skills to tell the story. So it could be anything. It could be like a toothbrush and a sink and a pair of soap, right? So it could be anything. I'm going to show you where you can find your story, whatever product you're selling, whatever thing that you want to sell, including um, WordPress management, which is what we do. So finding your story, one example is the one that we've just seen is the birth of the idea, so the origin story. Where, what, what, what was it that propelled you to do it? So for her, it was this tragic event, but it could be anything. It could be the fact that you felt like it was the right thing to do, that you wanted to, and any type of birth story is very powerful if told well. Transformations, so what is this? It's before, then comes your product, then it's the after. So it's a case study. You know, talk to your clients, find out how their lives are different, how you've improved their lives, and that's a fantastic story. Objections. So this is a slightly difficult one because it's all the right, all the reasons that people have said to you, no, we don't want to use your product. You know, go and talk to people. If they say to you, you know what, we don't want to use your product because we don't like your customer service, find that change it and tell that story. Say why you've changed it. How have you changed that no to a yes? And it can be very effective. And finally, what makes you different? Every, there are so many uh, products in the market today and it's, it's all there. It's very hard to find a blank space. So you need to find what makes you different, what makes you unique. So when you find your story, you need to be able to craft your story. So how do you do that? You focus on one moment or one person. So it's very easy when you look at an origin story, you think, oh yeah, there was, there was 10 of us and then one person came up with the idea and then we all sat in a pub and then this happened and then this happened. Right? So focus on one thing. It's, one, it's that one moment that makes all the difference or that one person. Don't, don't put too many people or moments in there. Set the scene. So make sure that you're vivid. Make sure you use your language, use the emotions, take the opportunity to really describe what's happening, how you can, how can you really portray that story, bring it to light. Okay, this is an obvious one because we've been talking about emotions and empathy. So make sure you include them. It's so easy to allude to a story, to allude to something that's happening and it's so much more difficult to really put the emotions and tell it. But make sure that you do because it will be that much more effective. And finally, offer a directive. It's a CTA, basically. Make sure your story has a direction, that people take action. So she ended her video, if you guys remember, with you know, uh, 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 the words on the video when she was telling you, know, every time you buy your bag I want you, and every time you look at it, I want you to remember, follow your dreams. So she's giving you a directive, but she's telling you actually to follow your dreams. It's very clever. So make sure you do the same thing. And finally, I mean, this might be very obvious, but a lot of people forget to do this. Tell your story. There are so many different ways that you can tell a story, and they're so beautiful. So you can do it with video. Again, we've just seen this example. You can do it on your website. I mean, really work on the about page. Don't just put, oh, this company was founded in this and this year, and this is who works here, and this is what we do. Really just get behind there. Tell that story. Who are you? Who are the people behind the company? And why should customers come to you? Um, testimonials, they're great. Talk to your clients, get them to give you a quote, what they think is the best thing about your company. Include case studies. I mean, they're a brilliant way of showing your, company, your product story in a real life example. Social media, blogs, emails, tweets, Instagram, any of those. And I know that a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, you know, social media is so overwhelming and I don't want to tweet all the time. But you can tell great stories. And finally, Presentations. I mean, presentations uh, are a great way because you are right there in front of the people and you can really change someone's mind. If you're passionate about what you're doing, if you're passionate about your product, about who you are, you can stand there and you can change someone's mind. And people take presentations for granted because there's so much material online. I mean, you can watch Linda courses and YouTube videos, but they're so powerful because you're right here. People can ask you questions. They can really understand you. So take every opportunity you have to go and present. I mean, work camps are a great way of doing that, especially because you get such a great supportive community. So make sure um, that you take advantage of that. So what I want to do is I really want to conclude by saying that in essence um, it's important 
to make sure that you understand people. And one of the companies that have done such a good job at it is Airbnb. Um, who here has ever used Airbnb? Could you put your hands up? Right. Who here has seen Airbnb in stories? All right, so not a, not a lot of people. But it's a new thing that they're trying. And I promise you in a year's time, you guys are going to be all reading these Airbnb stories. Why? Because they transform travel. No longer are you just going to stay at someone's apartment or you're staying in that city. You're living that story, right? You get to meet Michael, who, who actually, uh, that's, that's a great one. I mean, if you're going to pick one, read that one. He talks about his experience as a marathon runner. And you get to meet all these people. And it's no longer, I'm just going to Berlin or I'm just flying to Florida, but you're going there and you're living, you're, you're connecting and living with someone else and experiencing what their life is in that city. And so that's what's so important about it. It's, it can transform your opinion. So just to summarize, because I know I have given you a lot of information, but I've tried to give you as many concrete examples so that you can really see the power of empathy. Um, in essence, one of the most important things that we're all born with, which is empathy, and that we all need to survive, we have completely forgotten in marketing, right? Technology has come and we have all gotten onto the technology wagon and we are sending tweets and using lots of cool new stuff that's helping us be more efficient and more effective. But what it has done, it's cut down all of our interaction time with people. And so, if you bring it back a little bit, so you take a step back from all of that white noise, as Soul Carrier calls it, and you focus on what it's important, why you need to talk to people, why you need to connect with them, I promise you, you can do that very simply by reevaluating your copy and telling the story. And you will see an increase in customer acquisition and customer retention. And if any of you want to try it, you can always think about a toothbrush and a sink and soap and how they create one happy family. Thank you very much. Okay. I think, is there any questions or do I? <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, you can, you can, oh. <laughs> in this kind of modern world that we live in, that people are starting to call the post-truth era, mm -hmm. I think there's a kind of a risk that some of the well, I think you've made a really good point. I think it's um, it's really it can easily get very cynical, especially when you call out things like just putting someone's name because that is that you you code that. So you can do that so that people recognize what your name is and they just put the name down. So what I mentioned earlier, being specific. But I think that you need to look at it a little bit more behind that. And that's why I encourage people so much to focus on the actual story and to focus on the emotions. Because everyone who's started a company or works for a company, what makes them good is because they really believe in it and they believe in the product. And that is actually the most powerful thing that any company has. Essentially, it's its people. It's the story behind it. And then everything else comes because the people make the product, they, they do the customer service. So I think there is, there is definitely um, a little bit of a chance of that happening. And I really hope, uh, because, well, I'm going to do my best for, to make sure that that doesn't happen and that we can really take it back a little bit. Go, go back to the 16th century uh, and really just tell those stories with a candle and, and reading a book. So I hope that, yeah. So I, I hope that answers your question as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyone? Any else? Anyone else? kind of related to that, we, we're kind of losing the sort of professional register of speech, you know what I mean? There's this, this sort of dispassionate means of communicating yeah. sort of business. That's kind of just slowly receding now into the, into, the, into the past. And I wonder if that's, if you can endorse that whole is a good thing, because I find it exhausting 
the fact that I've got you know 100 emails in my inbox, each one of them is trying to make me feel something in particular, and I'm being wrenched from oh joy at this, oh despair at that, and oh it's, it's just so tiring. Um, it's, you know, is there something we need to use in moderation here? Is there some? Is there a absolutely? Yes, totally, absolutely. It is exhausting because the lines are now getting so blurred, right? Like you said, before it was very, you know, business was very professional, very businesslike, and then, you know, you would talk differently when you were at work and when you were at home. Um, so I get that entirely. And it can get too much, and people do go overboard. Um, but I still think that we get way many email, way more emails that are just like sign up, do this, do that, and and that just go into my spam that I don't even look at. I, you know, I still think that I would pay more attention to something which a li little bit sparked my uh, my interest. I think the problem there is as well that. Um, a lot of us get a lot of irrelevant emails that we don't want to. So, you know, if somebody emailed me something about um, planting a, a, a new flower pot, I mean, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Every single plant I have dies. I only have cacti, so um, that wouldn't interest me. So that's something that I would. That would. They could sell cactuses dancing for me, and how I would be a better person if I had a cactus, and it just it wouldn't interest me. Um, so I think it's important to also be relevant, which is one of the difficulties, I guess, in marketing. So stay tuned. I will tell you what I do with that. <laughs> yeah. And there was a question here. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry. I was just wondering when you um, have a different approach for men, men and women. Yeah. Because I, I can see how some things are, uh, women are, to me, seem kind of a little bit more empathetic. empathetic. Yeah. Men are. So do you have a different approach or do you? <laughs> Yes, definitely. Do you know what we, I was? We were talking about this recently, and it's uh, be don't uh, don't. So when you said so, my colleague is laughing because he he he's very touchy feely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but that's a really good point, and you're right. There is definitely a different approach. Um, I think it's important to remember that you're not your user, and this is something that we were talked about again recently. And you need to identify who your users are. I mean, a lot, a lot of the users. Um, so I, I write for Manage WP, and a lot of the users are developers who are male, um, and I write for them. So I'm, I'm not a developer. I'm, I'm not a guy. And, and so you, you just have to identify. So what I do is I, I get to interview a lot of them. I chat to them. Every, I go to these events and I talk to them. I think, okay, let's. See what clicks. What are they interested in? What, what's really fascinating to them? And then I try and introduce that. It's that that's the whole idea of being able to take someone else's perspective, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. But I, I think that every good marketer needs to be able to do that. So but it's a very good point. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Right. Yeah, and I just wanted to say that sometimes with the fresh eyes, you tell a story really differently than a developer themselves might be able to yeah. tell it. Have you noticed that when you um, approach a story, that the way that you craft it and frame it is is somewhat different than how other people how people may tell their own stories? Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to take both angles. So it's, sometimes it's really good when the person himself or herself tells the story because they've got that personal touch. But other times it's it's important to be able to tell it from someone else's perspective because there are lots of eyes, right? So mm -hmm. everyone sees things differently, and maybe you'll be able to relate to someone else. Um, so, but I think both are really important to incorporate in your marketing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do, do you feel sometimes that when um, empathy is invoked, uh, uh, coming back to the question over there, that there's somewhat of a feeling of deception, like, oh, I thought you were telling me a personal story, and now I see that you're trying to sell me something? Mm -hmm. is, is there... Do does you know, that, how do you avoid that in storytelling? Uh, well, I think you do have to remember that when you do do like emails and blogs and things like that, they, they can't be for every single person specifically. Mm -hmm. So I think, it's, so I think the, um, the native deodorant did a really good job because they told this cool story and everyone gets excited in the office. But then at the end, it's like we are tracking. So it breaks, there's a paragraph which breaks and says, but remember, we're going to track all your progress. We've high-fived and we're going to track your product and then we're going to send it to you. So th there has to be a break. You need to take it back to reality. I mean, it, a story is a great story, but then you have to remember that it is for everyone. It's not. It's not for person based. I mean, it's the same thing with novels. I mean, we all read them and we visualize them differently. Um, so each person will interpret it in their own way, which makes it so special. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. Any other questions? I just have one more comment. Um, yep. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> or a question for myself. Um, do do people often feel 
reluctant to share of themselves. For example, with the soul um, uh, carrier, carrier um, this was a very personal uh, story. Do people often feel like, wait a second, I don't want people to maybe know so much about me personally. Mm -hmm. And how, how do um, they, they work around that? Um, so the video that I showed isn't actually the one which is um, the one on YouTube because the, this is the original that we worked on. Um, so because the first time the video was told, exactly what you said, it was a little bit different. It wasn't so personal. Um, but I think it's important to explain to people that, especially in this case, um, that it is you that's created it, so you were the best thing about that product, and so you do. It's difficult to open up, but once you sort of break that first, take the first step, or break the ice, um, whatever you like, um, then it becomes much easier to to tell your story. But it is a challenge, and I think it's very difficult to encourage people. But if you get someone who's very passionate about it, you're more likely to tell them your story. In in I hope, <laughs> yeah. That's about it. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. <laughs> you guys are really making me sweat. I like it. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering what you thought about other people's stories. You know, you spoke about Airbnb, but Airbnb stories, in my mind, come to those ones that people have really bad experiences and they're being on the news and the PR side of things. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a really good point. So I don't know if any of you keep up with Airbnb. They did a whole new campaign about Diversify. Uh, is that is that sort of have you seen that one? Because apparently in a lot of uh, a lot of hosts there was some discrimination, and so they did. A, they, they have great PR, and they did a great campaign talking about how they're trying to diversify. Um, I actually think this is the first thing Airbnb has done, which is great because it is coming from the people because they are the ones writing the stories. It's not actually anyone behind Airbnb, um, but there is a lot of stuff where people try and cover uh, with stories and try and shape things differently. I mean, that's always going to happen. People are always going to do that. You just, you can't avoid that. You just hope that you're not one of those people and that you're doing the right thing and you're telling your story um, the, the right way, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other questions? <laughs> last question, as I'm told. So if anyone has last question, this is your final <laughs> chance. Yeah, we have. <laughs> No? Okay. And, and I, 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 I do. <laughs> I, I just wanted you to elaborate on that focus on a moment because I think that um, mm -hmm. I've seen uh, a lot of people try to, or companies try to tell stories mm -hmm. that were a bit too diffused and you didn't know where it was going. Yeah. So could you elaborate on that focus on a moment? Yeah. Um, so the, um, just to keep this short, but basically, so I studied languages and literature, uh, and I'm a bit of a bookworm, um, which I'm sure you guys have already guessed. Um, so the, the key to having like a very good story is people try and tell everything. You can't tell everything in detail without it being you know, thousands of pages, which some very famous people, very great writers have done, but there's a very small amount of those people who can pull it off. So my advice to people who do, if you're attempting to write a story, is just focus on one thing. And you can play around with it. You can take a banana and try and describe a banana and why it's so great. And the moment, the first time you've tried a banana, I mean, anything, really simple things, try and tell it and you'll get better at it. And then you will learn how to focus on that, that particular, on a banana and the first taste of it, for example. Um, and you'll get better at it. It's just practice. It's, it's, it, I did say empathy is a bit like yoga. You do have to practice it um, for it to become sort of, to come better at it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. I think we all learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Great.